it's the next level. I just arrived in Dallas 15 minutes ago. Should I be worried about you? Luther, if you recall, I was sent to 1963 on a job by the commission to make sure the president was assassinated. Oh, so wait, your old self is out there. Precisely. What, just walking around Dallas? Walking around Dallas with a briefcase that can get us home. Oh my god, Five, you're a genius. However, there are two significant problems with this plan. Problem number one, I'm a trained assassin, arguably the most dangerous assassin in the space-time continuum. If I know me, I'm not going to react kindly to bumping into myself. Problem number two, this real fine ointment here. You're not supposed to exist in close proximity to yourself in the same timeline. These side effects can be disastrous. Side effects? What sort of side effects? Well, according to Commission Handbook, Chapter 27, Subsection 3B, the seven stages in paradox psychosis are Stage 1, denial. 2, itching. 3, extreme thirst and urination. 4, excessive gas. 5, acute paranoia. 6, uncontrolled perspiration. And 7, homicidal rage. Hey, panelers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. You know, Mark, I, I say it every week, I think, and so I'm just going to say it early this time. It's so difficult to not go to the next episode <laughs> at the end of these episodes. Like, it's just, there's so, this season has just been so good. And oh, yeah. It just, it amazes me how, I mean, the, the first season was good, but this season is just outstanding because we know the characters were invested. They changed up the characters just enough to make us curious. And, and I'm just, I'm loving it a lot. And it's just so difficult not to, to go uh, to the next one. Oh, definitely. And uh, I know that feeling too, but as <laughs> we all know, I binged watched it, but my memory is poop. And basically I, you know, whenever I watch again per episode it does bring back information like oh okay i could recall that information mm -hmm. but yeah and i did that with this particular episode there was so many cool events yeah and and this is one of them that where you had to really really look at it and watch it to get like your quotes and get your best you know impressions of what was going on within the episode because to me this is one of my favorites out of the season too yeah and i wish i had watched it a third time but like that second time i kept pausing and backing it up and what was that and and, and so yeah there was so many good things that uh it's, uh, there were good moments, yeah, yeah. definitely, and uh, especially with Five and his future self or older That's, self, I should yeah. say. Some great, yeah. great moments. Yeah, I, I think I listed it as younger and older Five, even though technically the younger Five is older than the older Five. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Yeah. That's you know, how I perceived it too. Uh, so uh, it'll, I say I'm kid five. <laughs> there you go. That's a good way of looking at it. kid five and, and, and adult five or man five. Yeah. Either either way will work. I, I think in one part of my notes, I put mustached five because, you know, the older one's got a mustache. <laughs> so and it's really cool too because the way they look like facially. You would think grandfather and yeah, grandson. Yeah, they, they did a really good job of casting that actor. Like I noticed on my second watch, and I didn't put this in my notes, is that even like the cadence of his voice and the way he speaks, they must have spent some time together with this character so that they could really get down the fact that they were they were playing the same person just at different periods in their life. So Oh, definitely. All right, well, we should move on to what the episode is about. So... We're, this week, obviously, we're covering Umbrella Academy Season 2, Episode 8, The Seven Steps. And the synopsis for this episode is, A desperate five concocts a risky plan to intercept another version of himself. The FBI tortures Vanya. Diego discovers what's causing the apocalypse. Nice. Yes. And it kind of sums up everything. It's really good. They, these synopses are, are really good. Just the, the only problem I have with them is some of them, if you read them ahead of time, you're going to be spoiled about something, you know? Oh, yeah. And that's why I know other podcasts have stopped reading the synopses early 
they just read them. You know, we read them here on when we do the episode. We don't read them prior to the episode. So. Correct. Yeah, we just watch the episode as is. Yeah, and that's how I treat everything. And for you listeners that are out there, yeah, I'm currently watching The Boys. Oh, so so good. Another good one. So we're moving on to that after this. We might have to do like two at a time in the beginning for the first two episodes so that way we could try to play some sort of catch up yeah because it's gonna be it'll probably be finished i think or real close to finishing by the time we finish umbrella academy so yeah but i think it it would go pretty quick considering (laughs) yeah even though there's gonna be a lot of stuff to cover Mm -hmm. and we'll have a couple of guests that will be on to talk about said episodes within the boys season two but I think you guys will enjoy it because we got some friends that'll be on. Yeah, and it'll for, it'll for be another episodes. it'll be another fun one, kind of like The Witcher, to where we'll be going back and covering something that we've already watched. So correct, yeah, and honestly, everybody is it's getting high praises. A lot of people are really so good, digging man. this show, and I highly recommend it. I'm not saying shut off Umbrella Academy and just <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> follow you know, us most, week to week at most least of our, for Umbrella Academy. <laughs> most of our listeners have probably already binged Umbrella Academy, so... <laughs> well, it's kind of hard to... Well, yeah, yeah, Umbrella Academy definitely, but the boys, now it's week to week. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, so you guys have that opportunity, but plus, you know, it's still saved on Amazon's streaming site so that way you guys could go back and watch it again with us and if you have any feedback please send it yes yes you know you have a chance yes exactly. actually you know <laughs> and, and you'll be able to sp- you'll be able to spend spoiler full feedback as well so you know yeah. it's it's it'll be nice all right should we get started on these top five? Oh, definitely I think, I think you're you're the one to start this time okay so my number five would be and I'm not talking about number five in the show. <laughs> so <laughs> that would be Grace finds Hargreaves' secret office. You know, to me, that was, like, pretty cool because, you know, she sneaks in. That's one thing a lot of guys don't like women doing is sneaking around their stuff. <laughs> yeah. But she sees all the pictures and plans of Texas of the president's, I guess, motorcade and everything, mm-hmm. the roadmap and the president's visit with, you know, and who he's going to meet. But there were other like key figures in history that she was thumbing through. And I can't remember. Yeah, some of them I wish well. I had. I wish I had slowed it down and, and tried to kind of look back because it's a, it's really a cool scene. And I didn't I didn't put it in my notes because I saw that you had it. It's really cool because on one hand, he's he doesn't actually lie to her. He just doesn't tell her what's going on. You know, she, the very first thing she asks is, and I was just thinking of this before we started recording. The very first thing she asks is, are you into something nefarious? And his answer is quite often, you know, so she gets, (laughs) she gets the immediate idea. Okay. This guy is involved in some shady stuff. And, but he doesn't like say I'm not, that's what I'm saying. He doesn't tell her he's not. He says, he says, yeah, I am involved in shady things and I'm not going to tell you what they are. And, yeah. and uh, so it's, it's going to be interesting to see if this is the breaking point of their relationship or if something else happens. Yeah. Yeah. And plus, along with that, you had schematics of a space shuttle in there, too. Yeah, that's a good catch by you. Like I said, I didn't I didn't slow it down and, and uh, check it out. Yeah. So it's uh, yeah. To me, this was like my number five because of it, it's like a kind of photographic look of what's going on within Hargreaves and what he's doing. There's so much still that we don't know of him. Exactly. You know, there's so many elements of his life that, you know, he just doesn't discuss with Grace. And, you know, I think he held her in high regard, and that's why we got that Grace robot Mm -hmm. later on. I'm just curious as to when she was gone, how did she die? Because obviously she's not well, around. And that's why there right, was a robot. Right. And we don't know if she dies or she just leaves him. That's what I'm saying. Is, Correct. Is, yeah. Uh, hopefully we'll find out this season. All right. So my first one is I just went ahead and I went ahead and listed out. I actually paused it when five was laying out the seven <laughs> stages of uh, paradox uh, psychosis. He says yeah. denial, itching, extreme thirst and urination, which I guess that would cause urination. It's the extreme thirst, excessive gas, <laughs> acute paranoia, uncontrolled perspiration and homicidal rage and uh, apparently they're not all in in the same order you know because we see them at in different points uh a different way so it's uh, it's gonna be interesting to see the more of this playing out 
And, you know, we see him play out throughout the episode, both mm-hmm. in the younger five and the older five, you know, mustache, mustache five farts at the table. And, uh, <laughs> and then, you know, Luther sees that five, he's already like, you've got flop sweat going on there. And then there's that, <laughs> I laughed every time when they're leaving the, the restaurant and they're both denying that they have paradox psychosis and they both fart like at the same time. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> as, as soon as they get up from yeah. the table, are we okay? Yeah. Both yeah. of them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it was, uh, it was just hilarious. And I just love that they're keeping up the hilarity and the funny. So, well, the funny thing is too, is the homicidal rage. I don't know. That's just within five in general. Yeah. I, I mean, we, we actually, you know, we kind of saw that in the last, in the last episode when he killed the commission the or the yeah. board. So I, I don't know if maybe, yeah. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see, cause we've already, we know that five is, is already, but he did tell the handler last episode that he's not going to do that anymore. So I guess we're going to find out because uh, this, this paradox psychosis, it's just fun yeah. to say. Which is pretty cool. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, moving on to my number four, which would be I really liked how there was an option with five to get something from his older self. Mm -hmm. The fact that, you know, we knew the date all along of when his other self would show up to some degree. And I think he didn't want to deal with it or himself, as it were. And that's why he didn't ever bring it up to the other siblings. And plus there's that, you know, like you already mentioned, that whole paradox psychosis thing that could happen. Which we get to see both of his selves do, which is really so extremely funny yeah. to watch. This was actually my number three, kind of, the, is the whole plan that Five is coming up with is really, it's kind of sketchy in my in my opinion anyway. Because if he, if he sends his older self to 2019 with the correct calculations, that's going to change the timeline. Right. Cause exactly. He, he already said, if I don't go to 2019, then I'm going to cease to exist. So I still got to make sure I go to 2019. Either he's not putting it together that he can't go to 2019 as his older self that would change everything. And so I'm wondering, I'm starting to wonder if it's five, the younger five that gives him the wrong calculations so that he actually causes himself to go back and become his younger self. Is that confusing? <laughs> A little bit, but I understand where you're coming from. Yeah, it. I think I, I started thinking about this last night when I was rewatching and I was writing notes and I'm like, he's literally giving him information and so does Luther at certain points. And mm-hmm. I have that in my notes as well because in my notes it states, you know, Luther gives older five the information about Vanya in the men's room. Yeah. He never knew that Vanya was the... The, like bomb the cause or whatever right yeah, yeah what, the what cause. i didn't write it down but it's like uh, oh no it's it's actually diego who says vanya is the bomb vanya is always the bomb <laughs> yeah yeah i have that as well <laughs> you know now that you know that this could change something based upon exactly or events that have already happened so they're already changing certain events where we don't see the team as mm-hmm. what they're supposed to be when we first saw them in the very beginning of the exactly, season. Exactly, exactly. That one fight scene when it was, what was it, Russia against, mm-hmm. or even the Cubans or whatever, again, with that whole war that's going yeah, on. Yeah, exactly, there. exactly. And so, yeah, that's that was uh, right there. I'll put you back. So we'll go into, I think we go to year number three. That would be the electroshock treatment of, you know, with the interrogation was a bit odd with Vanya. The visions are, are pretty much wacky, in mm-hmm. my opinion. Beck's song Loser playing during the scene itself, that was a bit trippy for me. And the flashback of her going to the dinner table with all the other siblings at the table. And, you know, they're all just looking at her, including Hargreaves. You can feel the paranoia from within her. And that stupid... The weird thing of the eating of the brains at the dinner table reminded me of Iron Maiden's album cover for Peace of Mind because <laughs> they literally had that. It was like almost like a cake pan, and they had it up, and it was you could see the the bandmates with the uh, the brain there like a gelatin thing. Yeah, you know that connect. You know, and plus the the connection with Harlan seems clear within it with mm-hmm. all, within all the visions and everything that's going on because they're sharing certain things but when she takes a bite of that brain her memories all come back we see all these little things that snippets of what we've already seen from last season up into the very beginning of the season all come back to her and the anger the fear the pain and it seems that she just lashes out all the time because of all that and that was a lot of her pent-up rage, I think, in the very beginning because 
she was being suffocated because, you know, Hargreaves. Yeah, it's it's an interesting take because it's really it, it shows us first off that her amnesia was real, and I had this later on in, in my point, so I'll just I'll just kind of combine some stuff that I had. The whole eating of the brains, like you said, is just is just wild. The fact that they used LSD to kind of start her interrogation or get her interrogation going, and they're shocking her is yeah. is the whole thing is just is wild. Like you said, she has these these eyeballs are down in the in the water trough. Thing. She has this vision of this dinner where they're all eating. They're all eating brains except for her. And then Hargreaves is just insisting and telling her, "You got to eat the brains. The only way you're going to remember is if you eat the brains." And then, like you said, she gets this flood of memories, and she says, "I remember." And you even, when they cut to Harlan, you see Harlan saying, "I remember." It's going to be interesting to see how this affects Harlan in in the next couple of episodes as well. We're so close to the to the end here that it's uh it's it's really surprising but uh i'm just yeah that whole scene is just like i said i, I just keep going back to it. it's just wild everything and and like you said she's got this pent up it's it's a different type of subjugation that she was under like with hargreaves he was keeping her sedated with you know the medication and the rumor that Allison had told her that she's not special that she doesn't have any powers exactly and then in this time she's got the amnesia so as soon as just like in the first season when the revelation that she has powers and that Allison that's what caused her to go evil or psychotic or however you want to put it and then in in this in this episode it's kind of the same it's very similar it's the same thing where she gets all this flood of memories and she goes psychotic and just can't stop it's like once she starts it's kind of like the phoenix from x-men days you know that once Correct, she starts yeah. building up her power she can't stop she can't rein it in and so i think that's what we're gonna gonna see here in the next couple episodes maybe is if she's able to rein it in oh it's pretty funny how you bring up the uh phoenix saga and ellen page was actually in the x -Men. that's right she was <laughs> she was so we, we've kind of talked about a lot of mine so i'm just going to go to the one that i haven't talked about which is diego in the commission and going through his orientation and you know i love that little smile that she gets on her on her face that she's really enjoying seeing his kind of reaction to everything that's going on around her it's it's, it's one of those things where like like when he for the first time realizes that wait you guys control time and she's like no we maintain time we make sure the right thing is supposed to happen set forth it's like it's set in its path yeah yeah and it's it's a whole we get more and more information about what's going on with the handler after <laughs> it was hilarious when she when herb says there was a coup d'etat and uh, <laughs> diego doesn't know what that means as he has to explain yeah. it to him and then uh, they you get we get the revelation that people are disappearing that the timeline is changing and herb says you know there's supposed to be two people in this room and there's no one there should have been two people in the room when diego entered so and then of course the diego finding out that kennedy is supposed to die really this is going to be another thing that's going to be interesting to see his if there's any kind of reaction by him in the next couple episodes because if they don't stop vanya then kennedy has to die and that's his whole mission this this season has been to stop Kennedy's assassination, and now to find out that oh no, Kennedy is supposed to die. Is, yeah, is gonna and be that's how history has been written. And right. if you undo history, it unravels everything. Yeah. yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna find <laughs> out here. Like I said, there's a, there's a lot. It was so tough. Like I said, to not go to the next to the next one. So, uh, so where are we at? I I've got some of mine. We got jumbled. I think we're, at yeah, we're jumbled. I, I would just go straight to my number two, which yeah, actually revolves around what you were doing. Mm -hmm. So that would be Diego gets involved with Herb and looks at the timeline and her posting, pointing out that it's unraveling, yeah. you know, and her brings Diego to La Resistance, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and of course, you know, Diego looks at him like, okay, what? Yeah. And then, you know, and then Dot saying, you don't mess with the with case management. Yeah, I thought that was great when he comes in the room. It's 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 almost like that scene where you think of when a, a bunch of nerds all get together to solve the problem and you realize a bunch of hackers. Yeah, yeah, or a bunch of hackers or whatever. They're like, you know, we're case management. We we'll, we'll t we can get this going. And so I love that we're getting more of Herb also that he comes with Diego to Allison's house using yeah. the briefcase. I thought that was <laughs> that was really cool there at the end or towards Definitely. the end. So one of mine is 
I'll just jump down to my notes since we kind of talked about all of mine is I, I had a question that I kind of answered for myself because when Luther meets the older five, he introduces himself as number one. And when the older five looks at him, he says, Luther. And I went, wait, how would he know what Luther's name is? Because he supposedly disappeared before they, you know, before they got names. And I realized, I remembered then from season one that he found the book. He found Vanya's book in the rubble. Correct. And so he read that. And so that's how he knows all of their their names and stuff. So that, well, they gave themselves their own names. We well, not in the show. We didn't. We have not seen any. There's not been a scene in the show that I recall anyway, where they showed us that naming, how they got those names, like a flashback right. or we, something not, of them saying, "Hey, I'm just going to give myself a name." Right. Or who gave them the names? I think other podcasts. I think Strange Indeed alluded to in the comics or some maybe I can't remember one of them talked about in the comics that Grace gave them the names, the robot Grace, but I don't remember that for sure, so don't. But we haven't been given that in the show yet how they attained their names. That would be a nice flashback to go to mm -hmm. to have that as them as kids or them achieving their names. Mm -hmm. And of course, the one person we don't have a name for is Five. Right. Right. Like I said, because he <laughs> because he left before they got their names. So correct. Yeah, he took off. So that was and we saw that scene too in season one. Season one, yeah. Yeah. When he when he disappears, right. Yeah. All right, cool. So we are to your number one, unless we've already discussed your number one. I don't think we have. No, no, we didn't get to there. And yeah, my number one would be Vanya is the bomb. She will <laughs> always be the bomb, according to Diego and what he states in that quote. I think it all comes down to Vanya, and like I stated before, with the anger, fear, and pain that brings out all these apocalypses, you know? Right. I also like the fact that Diego, Allison, and Klaus, you know, get together, and, you know, not to kill her, they, they just band together, and not to kill her, but to stop her, which will continue on to the next episode, so... Sorry, panelers. Yeah. A cliffhanger after at the end of this episode, and I'm pretty sure you're like me and Steve, and you're like, wait a minute, I just gotta watch the next episode. Yeah, like I said, it was so tough not to not to go to the next one because we get that that image of Vanya floating in the air. Yeah, I love that the interaction there between Diego, Allison, and Klaus as they're on the floor, and Klaus is like is he's like, well, she killed all the, all the FBI guys are, are down. Why is she still, you know, doing this? Why doesn't she stop? And, and so we're going to have to see if maybe they're going to try to appeal to her. Are they going to be able to stop her? What's, mm. what's going to happen. And uh, yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm excited. We've only got two episodes left, so this has got to resolve. And that kind of brings me to what I'll use as my last point, which is also in my notes is it, it didn't occur to me until the second watch that five, the younger five says, I'm going to be on the grassy knoll in about an hour. And I yep. realized, so unless we go all the way to November 25th, when five originally showed up in the timeline, mm -hmm. we're going to, these last couple of episodes are just going to cover a short amount of time, like an hour, you know, or yeah, within an hour, within an hour, yeah. because they've got to, it's, we got to see if Kennedy is going to be assassinated or not, or if the FBI building is still going to blow up, if they're going to be able to stop it. And then, you know, what happens to bring them together as a team to fight for America, if that happens. So it's uh, yeah, like you said, cliffhanger, and we're stuck waiting until we finish this podcast to, <laughs> to watch the next one. But the funny thing is, is too, we had that, I think it was last episode where we were watching, it was within like what, 77 minutes? Yeah, you're right. I, I forgot about that because, but I mean, it covered a little bit different because, because five travels to 1982 remember and then he comes back and he says okay we've only got 77 minutes so you're right yeah. uh ep that episode covered a shorter amount of time because it ends with where this episode picks right up which is right after they missed the appointment so yeah it covered a little over the 77 minutes because he throws the briefcase up into the air so and destroys it yeah yep. so that they don't get caught in the the time wave Three of them. All right, well, you should move on to our, our notes. You've used a lot, I see. Yeah, I think the only one I have – well, there's a couple. Um, uh, the only one I have left, really, that I, we haven't already talked about is the, the infinite, infinite switchboard. And uh, Yeah. <laughs> it just – that whole room was, was really, really cool, and I liked the look of it. And uh, what did you think of the infinite switchboard? 
Well, to me, it looked like an old phone-style switchboard with quarter-inch connections to tap into certain areas to get, you know basically connect somebody. Mm -hmm. But with this, it was within you know specific timelines, and Herb was you know he's the master of it, obviously, yeah. and connecting it and getting to see where Vanya was. But they also had the tube TVs above them, so you could see what's going on within said timeline. Yeah, and it's interesting because what that shows us really is that they were using, just like the rest of the commission, because remember the commission is like, that building is like in the 1930s, I think. I don't remember what the year was last last season when we went to it. But you would think, so they would have to use the technology of the day, even though they have futuristic technology with, you know, time travel stuff, but, they're, Correct, but yeah. for their practical practical elements they're going to use you know just the the stuff technology of that day so that's why the room looked the way it is and it's so big you know you would think that it would be they wouldn't need that much room so yeah i didn't put in my notes but i noticed it on the second watch when the swede is about to to chop his hand off because that's the hand he used to kill his brother mm -hmm. the, he notices another one of those tubes come down from the commission or the the cat maybe knocks over the one that had the information about Diego. I'm not really sure, but I realized, like I said, on my second watch that he takes the knife and he scratches it off and he realizes that the handler that we now get confirmation that that tube that came down the, the chimney was thrown there by Lila, that it was put together as a craft project by the handler. Cause we get that, this quick glimpse. Uh, we don't see her face, but we see all the stuff on the table. We see her spray painting or, or painting the tube so that it looks like it, it comes from the commission. And then he smells it and he smells the lavender of the same scent that the handler had. So this is going to be interesting that we're going to, that the Swede now realizes that it was, wasn't Diego who killed mm. his brother. It was the handler. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see because he's going to want to get revenge on the handler, I think. Oh, definitely. <laughs> you know that. He, he's into Lila, but, you know, he doesn't like her mom. Yeah. <laughs> I, no, uh, I don't think the notes. Swede is. The Diego's into Lila. I don't think the Swede knows anything oh no no him. i'm talking about diego yeah yeah no i was talking yeah. about the swede he's the the, the last remaining swede is going to go yeah. after the handler so yeah okay so oh, definitely you've got, yeah he you've is got... but also diego will go after the handler oh too. yeah <laughs> eventually eventually he probably will but he's more concerned about the apocalypse right now Cause, yeah because I... that whole thing with where he admitted that he's not as into lila as she is into him and that can, that gave the handler enough to go okay we'll put him through orientation and see see how he works out so but you've got a few <laughs> notes here as well oh definitely the first one would be the fbi agent when vanya was trying to use her powers to get away from during the interrogation mm -hmm. it, it looked like he was transforming in the face when she was using her power on him no i, I don't i don't think so i i don't think that's what was i think that's just the that's just what her power like i think she was going to blow up his head with her power, with her telekinesis. I don't think he's any kind of, I don't think there's any kind of alien thing in him because oh, it okay. stops. The reason it, it stops is because that the nurse grabs her and sedates her and it puts the like chloroform or whatever that was on that. Yeah, it was that chloroform. Thing. Yeah. And that's what, that's what stops. I think that, I think she was going to explode his head with her, with her power. Cause we're oh, not, okay. we're not a hundred percent sure. You know, her power is kind of weird in that we have this weird eerie light that comes out, but she also has some sort of telekinesis. It's very similar, as I mentioned earlier. It's very similar to the – what's the name of the character, the X-Men character? Jean Grey, Jean Grey and yeah. the Phoenix. It's, it's yeah. very very much that she's telekinetic and she's that she has telekinesis, but she doesn't have the mind control. Or as far as we know, we, we don't. Or we, control sound or yeah. something like that, yeah. too. Just so, yeah, I, like Dazzler. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that that's all that was going on there was that was her, the, what was, what was about to happen. I, mean, I think his head was going to explode. It was so. <laughs> all right. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. That, you turned me around. <laughs> Plus, you know, the, the cool thing about that scene, too, is when the nurse starts using the chloroform, it takes a while for chloroform to actually work on somebody. It takes a matter of like a couple of minutes. Oh, I didn't it know doesn't that. take. Yeah, it doesn't take a matter of like putting it over somebody's mouth and. Yeah. Right. So that's and then they just go straight out. So that was pretty cool that they actually made that more of a realistic hmm. of what's going on with chloroform. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. So the next one I would have was just pretty funny. Mr. Briefcase reminded me of the Jurassic Park tour with Mr. DNA <laughs> when Diego was going through his training. But this was a training 
video for Diego. <laughs> well, no, for, it, to get into the commission. Yeah, it wasn't just Diego. There was a whole classroom full of. Oh yeah, that, of, yeah, so, yeah it, was, it was orientation but, for everybody. But yeah, that was pretty funny, Mister Briefcase. And you've made the the good decision to <laughs> whatever <laughs> join the commission. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much anything that they used to do in the late nineties when they sat you down with a VHS <laughs> to train for your position, exactly. and they had a bunch of videos and stuff, which is funny. Exactly. Next one would be the ding dong ding in the hallways of the commission when there is an announcement and typewriters are clacking in the background. Yeah. Th this gave me flashbacks of Snowpiercer with the ding dong dang. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good call. And last one be, you know, I already talked about it. Yeah. We'll Ixnay that. Okay, so so we got a couple of quotes here. I loved at the beginning when Lila was trying to convince the handler to let her hire Diego because uh, she says, well, you didn't say I had the authority to, to hire anybody I wanted. And uh, the handler says, sweetheart, your vagina needs glasses. He's not worth it. I just thought that was great. Your vagina needs glasses. Come on. <laughs> so... First one for me would be Klaus saying, so are we burning or burying when he sees the Swedish assassin dead on Allison's couch? <laughs> yeah, that was great. That was another one of those moments in the episode where you go, where you're, you're reminded that these siblings worked together for a, a pretty long time before the group slowly broke up, you know, yeah. and went their separate ways. So uh, it, it was really cool to see them coming back. Uh, my last one is just, a, again, it's Klaus, and when he's there in the alleyway and Five is ranting about uh, the missing, the, the siblings missing their appointment, missing the time, and, uh, yeah. and and Klaus just says, did Five get meaner? And uh, I think that's great because that's an echo of did we get sexier that earlier in the season. Yep. So I <laughs> thought it was great. Did he get meaner? Next one for me would be, if I know me, I'm not going to react kindly to bumping into myself, and that would be Five after he says, I have to find myself. Yeah. Which is funny, a funny thing to say or hear. Because, and Luther's reaction was just like he had that questionable look like, what? what? Yeah, I still, <laughs> I, yeah, I'm not even 100% sure that Luther fully understood what, because he's, I have to find myself. And Luther's like, what? What do you, you know? And the last one would be, I have pubic hair older than you. And that's older five to younger five in the Irish pub while talking about who is smarter. Yeah, and I think, I, I, I think Luther says something says something like, is that real? Is that true? Or something like that. <laughs> or how is that possible? Or something something like that in, in response. He's just watching this exchange. And uh, yeah, Luther's been great this uh, this season. Oh, definitely. And to add on a little bit more that just came to mind, Herb, when they're actually in Allison and Ray's house and they have the Swede's body wrapped in the rug and roped, and they're, you know, just after what Klaus was stating, are we burning mm -hmm. or burying? Herb goes, oh, we do offer carpet cleaning, <laughs> yeah. body that removal was, that services. Was, that was great. Yeah. Yeah. So you said we've got some audio feedback. Do you want to play that first or do we want to read the other? We'll read the first one. Okay. Uh, so this is from our good friend, Laura. Thank you, Laura, very much for submitting feedback. And this is what Laura says. She says, guys, just a little intel. You mentioned on the podcast that Elliot had green toenails, which meant he was eccentric. And that is how uh, Lila recognized him. If you will remember when Five and Diego had Elliot tied up, while watching the video footage of Kennedy in Dallas, Lila was painting his toenails green. Uh, some kind of smiley face emoji there. And in, in, she's enjoying the <laughs> podcast. I was uh, too impatient to go week by week with this one, but I look forward to hearing what you thought of this season. So thank you very much again, Lara, for that. And thank you for that reminder that, yes, uh, the green toenails was uh, was Lila while Elliot was tied up. Cool. And thank you, Lyra, for saying that and clarifying. Actually, you brought that back to my memory. When I saw that, I was like, oh, you're right, when, when you wrote that. So I thought that was cool. Now we got some audio feedback from our friend Daphne, and I'll play that now. Hey, Mark and Steve. This is Daphne, just sending in feedback for Umbrella Academy Season 2, Episode 8. Wow. Lila is just like her mommy, because kidnapping Diego sounds like something the handler would do. It's interesting that Lila seems to be really attached to Diego, and I wonder what would happen if she had to make a choice between the two. Poor Grace. I'm just afraid of what's going to happen to her now that Reginald has seen her digging amongst his things, and she has run off now. And... Five meeting five and all the farts that you can handle. 
Wow. <laughs> I can't even. And then there's... And then there was Vanya and her acid trip. It's quite scary to think that she may be responsible for yet another explosion that causes the end of the world. Hopefully they'll be able to figure it out soon. Looking forward to hearing what you guys think and listening to the episode. Bye, guys. Well, thank you. Yes, thank you so Daphne. much, Daphne. Yeah, that was pretty cool. And yeah, it's like, yeah, it all leads to Vanya. Yep. <laughs> is the bomb.com all right <laughs> <laughs> all right well we got some comic news and good news at least <laughs> this yeah. week I'm, I'm loving it and the idea we have a she hulk now for the disney plus show and it's not allison brie like i wanted it to be but we do have tatiana mazzolani in the lead role and i can see her in the jennifer walters character in the show and if you listeners are not familiar with her, she was in a TV show called Orphan Black, where she had to play multiple versions of herself or her character self. Yeah, Orphan Black was a wonderful, wonderful show. I have I have the discs. I need to go back and, and rewatch that here eventually because it's, it's about five, six, five or six seasons, I think. Um, and it was uh, really, really good. And Tatiana Maslany is, is excellent in it as well. So. Yeah, I only caught maybe about 10 episodes, but every one that I watched was really cool, and it's something I should really look back at and go forward with. But uh, I'm just happy that they finally got somebody signed on to play this character, and Mark Ruffalo actually tweeted it out before I think it was officially launched, <laughs> as per <laughs> usual, uh, stating it's like, oh, welcome to the family or something, yeah. but uh, yeah. That it's pretty cool. Now that I look forward to seeing Mark Ruffalo in that show because that's how else is Jennifer Walters going to become She Hulk? She has to have that blood transfusion mm -hmm. from her cousin Bruce Banner. Okay. And the last part of our comic news that would be the Mandalorian season two trailer has dropped, and that just means that it will be coming at the end of October, and I can't wait to watch it. And a lot of other people I know. It, are going to be looks, anticipating it this. It looks amazing. So I'm uh, I'm excited for it. I'm excited of our friends at House Podcastica. We'll be covering it when it comes out. So Definitely. that's going to be, uh, that's, I guess, right into our podcast recommendations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with podcast recommendations, I would have Strange Indeed with their coverage and review on the Umbrella Academy Season 2. So check out Rima and Paik on the Podcastica Network on Strange Indeed and check them out. And the last one I would have would be Run For Your Lives with Daphne and Paik on the Pirate Core Entertainment Network. They cover monster movies, disaster movies, and anything else that makes you run for your lives. So they are covering Twister this week, and it should be available once you hear this podcast. I actually sent in some feedback, and... Yeah, you know, it was a movie that I enjoyed too. So I suggest. I think I missed the deadline on that. So uh, and I, I could not find it streaming anywhere. So I wasn't able to watch it. But uh, uh, I may try to send something in real quick if they haven't if they haven't finalized their recording yet. Uh, I'll see maybe. Um, okay. So, but yeah, I meant to send something in into them, and I just completely forgot. This was a strange indeed week for me. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't think. <laughs> All right. So the only podcast recommendation I have besides the one I already gave, uh, gave was that we have to go back Lost Revisited, which is a joint podcast between Podcastica and this network, the Next Level Podcast Network is back. Ben and Kristen uh, are doing a wonderful job with this slow rewatch of, of Lost. Uh, they have just started season four, and this is where stuff gets crazy in Lost. So if you are a fan <laughs> of Lost or if you're just a fan of Ben and Kristen, um, give it a listen. I love it. It's a, it's a great podcast. I try to send them something every week as well. And I've just got to get run for your lives in the rotation of, of podcast uh, recordings. <laughs> <laughs> so many podcasts, so many podcasts. It's true. It's so little time. Uh, <laughs> well, to submit your feedback, we can be heard on Spotify, Google play, Apple podcasts, or wherever you get your podcast player of choice. If ratings are available, please give us a rating or review on one of all of those platforms. And you can check us out on our new website, www.panels2pixelspodcast.com. And to submit your theories and feedback, go to our Facebook group. That would be facebook.com slash panels2pixels. Or you could send us an email 
old school. And that would be at panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That would be panels and two is spelt with T O and pixels and the number one at gmail.com. Or you can call us and leave a voicemail at 845 350 2095. Again, that's 845 350 2095. Act now. <laughs> And you could also find us on YouTube if you search Panels to Pixels Podcast. So please give us a thumbs up or subscribe, whatever you want to do. Anything, any interaction or comments on there will be greatly appreciated. So if you want to send us feedback for any episodes of Season 2 of The Umbrella Academy, just send them ahead. Just make sure that you're aware that, you know, we're doing this episode per episode. Yeah, I have a really bad memory when it comes to the shows, but I will hold on to your feedback and we will put that into specific episodes that are coming on. And at this point, we only have two more episodes, I believe. Yep. So where else can listeners hear us? Well, you can uh, you can hear me right here, of course, and I just I love watching TV. I probably love watching TV way too much, uh, but I, I send voicemails to various podcasts. There's only a, a few. It seems like a lot, but it uh, I send voicemails to different podcasts that cover TV shows that I love and that are from the friends of mine that I have, and so I enjoy that. So you can hear my voice pop up just about anywhere you think. And I can be found right here on Panels Pixels as well as sending out audio feedback to other podcasts that I love that my friends do you can also hear me on a new podcast that will be releasing soon called adrenaline cinema on the pirate core entertainment network that podcast will be about those action and adventure films pure action films and anything to do with what gets your adrenaline going while watching an action film panels to pixels will remain on the next level podcast network you know stay tuned here and we'll keep you up to date or just check out pirate core entertainment's website which would be pirate and core spelled out c-o-r-p-s entertainment.com well thanks for listening panelers i'm steve and i'm mark and we'll see you on the next panel good night good night <laughs>